What's up everyone, K Daddy here. I recently saw Frozen 2 and it wasn't great. Hey, come on, guys, everybody, everybody calm down. Come on, please. Now you gotta understand, Frozen has never been my cup of tea. I remember seeing it back when I was just a wee lad and being like, ah, oh, whatever. The story works, the characters are likable, the music is undeniably catchy, and the tone makes it feel like a classic. I obviously understand the hype, but at the same time, it always just felt like a movie that checked off all the boxes of what makes for a pretty enjoyable movie for families. My point is, I don't have anything against Frozen. If it makes you happy, good for you, I'm glad, but it was never my thing. The inevitable Frozen 2 has finally hit theaters and I trudged my way over to see it and have more to say about it than I thought. Let me say what I enjoyed first. Don't get me wrong, it's no Toy Story 4 and consider this an obligatory statement where I make it clear that I'm hoping Toy Story 4 beats Frozen at the Oscars. But yeah, especially compared to the first film, the animation is really well done. I do like the new trend that Disney and other animation companies are taking where they're recognizing that making things look extremely realistic, like fur, <laughs> he made a fur joke, doesn't always mean it's automatically great. Like there's tons of really interesting 2D animation in this, mostly in the beginning beginning that feels like a breath of fresh air. I also always thought Frozen looked dull compared to most Disney animated films because the color palette was pretty bland. The mix of greens and purples and blues always came out kind of gray to me, but they definitely stepped it up this time around and the surroundings feel as though they have a lot more texture. The world is not only more believable, but it's super inviting. I also enjoyed the music for the most part. It's not something I'd ever listen to myself outside the movie, but I think it works in the context of the story and is far from unbearable. Although I'm sure if any of these songs got the let it go treatment, I'd grow to despise them. Besides that, I think this film is boring, uninspired, empty, and straight up lazy. Let's talk about it, shall we? I can't think of a messier way of approaching a sequel to something as big as the first Frozen. I understand it's a lot to follow up, but I feel like they just threw a bunch of ideas out there and hoped it all clicked by the end of the film. They have three things they want to accomplish. Go deeper with Elsa and Anna, make Olaf more than a comic relief, and get Kristoff to marry Anna. But they don't go fully into depth on any of these ideas. They all get tied up in the span of 10 minutes in the end of the film and you're just like, okay? The only one of those three that really felt like it worked for me was Olaf, because before this I despised him and didn't see the humor at all, and after this I was like, alright, I guess he can stay. But the Kristoff thing? What? Huh? Excuse me? Why? No, literally, why was this necessary? I get that they're supposed to get married, I guess for there to be some progression, but this honestly could have happened at the beginning of the movie and nothing would have been different. Honestly, them having those small, silly arguments and second doubting the proposal after it happens would have been more interesting and challenged the writers to wrap things up and solve them in an interesting and satisfying way, but no, they went with the same running joke that Kristoff just can't seem to find the right time to propose because of awkward moments and they just did that for the entire movie. Like, what purpose are these bit serving besides giving us a boy band parody song by Kristoff that we will get into in a little bit. It just felt like a waste of time. Elsa's subplot is a mess, but it works so I won't get into it that much. My issue is that it ultimately feels like a subplot as opposed to the main plot, especially with everything else that's happening around it. But again, I appreciate the ambitious approach they had for it, even if the execution wasn't perfect. <laughs> More than anything, Frozen 2 feels wildly unoriginal, and I owe that to the fact that it feels like a blender of other influences and internet jokes and better media. I mean, for a company like Disney that's behind some of the most original and creative ideas out there, it's kind of hilarious how cookie-cutter this film feels, although I guess it's not too surprising anymore. The obvious comparison is that it feels like Annihilation. A group of people enter a foggy, purple-tinted area full of mystery, and inside a bunch of weird things start happening and stuff from their past is brought up, and they do some soul-searching, and it's kind of spooky, and when they confront some big, mysterious objects, a weird synth part of the song kicks in. Yeah, it's pretty much Annihilation. But apart from that, there's a bunch of other stuff that feels like rehashed ideas from older films. One of which is Olaf recreating the donkey scene from Shrek where he's asking are we there yet and spitting a bunch of funny jokes. Except this time it's Olaf and the jokes are from like Twitter. Like, did you know Wombat's poop squares? Like, haha, I remember seeing that on Twitter like a few months ago. Awesome. Then there's the boy band song from Kristoff, which I promise I'd talk about. Honestly, I thought it was funny. I was trying to figure out if it was supposed to be funny for a while, ultimately realizing it totally was, so probably Props to them for that. My thing about it is that they parody the Queen video for Bohemian Rhapsody. When films that feel destined for classic status reference other classics, it kind of diminishes their classic label to me. Like, you never saw Snow White or the OG Lion King referencing other popular jokes in pop culture. It's not like the original Mulan took a meme like This Is Fine Dog and essentially ripped it off and turned it into an entire song like Olaf did in this. You might be wondering why these references are such a problem, and it all comes down to... 
Frozen 2 just isn't gonna age well. I've definitely made this argument before, and Frozen 2 feels like the peak of that, but some of the jokes and line deliveries in this thing feel like they came straight out of a BuzzFeed article. It's written like a monologue for Ellen. It doesn't feel like characters in this world talking to each other, it feels like a bunch of writers laughing at society through the perspective of social media. The first Frozen isn't my thing, but I feel like it still holds up today and doesn't feel uncomfortable to watch. It's definitely not forgettable. Another sequel that lost its voice for the sake of coming off as relatable and trendy was The Incredibles 2, and I didn't think that was an awful film by any means, but nobody ever talks about it anymore, and it's only been, what, two years? It's a lot like fast food. You can argue it's still entertaining and tastes good in the moment, it satisfies your needs, but what did you really get out of it? Don't you want something with a voice of its own? Frozen 2 feels like a collection of different references, ideas, influences, whatever you want to call it, all blended into a movie that you know, we'll get the job done. Not a film that you can say was worth your time, although I will say don't not see this movie. If you really wanted to see it, go check it out. I'm not telling you to not see something. Don't, don't listen to me. I just think it's fascinating to look back at something like Toy Story 4, something that didn't need to happen and be able to say it proved itself necessary. Whereas with Frozen 2, it feels like something that needed to happen a few months ago, but after seeing it just feels disposable. At the end of the day, Frozen 2 isn't the worst thing in the world. It's just not great.